Throughout the last 12 months, literally hundreds of thousands of feet of film and videotape have been pouring into editing suites here on RTE from all parts of Ireland. The people who make sense of it all are the editors. They save our blushes many a time. Uh, but just to give you a, a start of the season, chuckle, so to speak, we thought you might like to see now what you didn't see then. Uh, we start with uh, Kevin O'Kelly, our former religious affairs correspondent, who was renowned for getting it right first time. But on this particular day, well, it just wasn't Kevin's day. This conference is, of course, about Christian... I stumbled. Well, we'll come back to Kevin in just a moment or two, but uh, meantime, let's join Charlie Bird down at Dublin Port. Okay. okay. With negotiations now going on to try and hammer out a rescue package for BNI before next Tuesday's government deadline for closure. The f it's okay. I have to wait, it's no use. Okay. With negotiations now going on to try and hammer out a deal. No, I'm at the loss of this. F nice try, Charlie. So, uh, How's Kevin getting along? The two cardinals led an assembly of several hundred people, though it was noticeable. Oh. Well, don't worry about it, Kevin. It's bound to get better, isn't it? Cardinal Sunnins is, of course... Of course, Cardinal Sunnins, for his part, is internationally known for his efforts at church union. Oh, well, let's head northwards now for some frogs, not the, the kind that jump about, but the type that get in the throat. The throat in this particular case belongs to Michael Fisher. The tribunal will now have to consider whether or... <coughs> Could happen to anyone. Uh, meanwhile, we join Uno Hagen down on the farm. Well, on the bog, actually. According to the designers, this machine can produce a thousand tons of turf in 24 hours. That's 30,000 pounds. I forgot it. Never mind, Una. Tell you what, have another go. According to the, to the designer... <laughs> well, Owen eventually got it right. And so did Alistair Jackson, and again, and again, and again. The story of Alistair Jackson was he had to go down to Hoth to try out a new wetsuit. This required him to jump into the sea. And every time he did it, uh, the cameraman said, well, it was this wrong with it or that wrong with it. What Alistair didn't know, that each shot was perfect. It was a bitterly cold day. Cameramen can be very cruel. If you go out in boats, you may fall into the sea. And that's why you need something like this for protection from the cold. It... If you go out in boats, you may fall into the sea. And that's why you need something like this for protection from the cold. It's Irish made and it's styled with one eye on the continental market. And if you're going to sail in February, it's essential. Where's the hot whiskey? And if you're going to sail in February, a suit like this is essential. And if you're going to sail in February, a suit like this is essential. And if you're going to sail in February, a suit like this is essential. No. A suit like this is essential. And if you're going to sail in February, a suit like this is essential. No. And if you're going to sail in... No. Sorry. Go ahead. Anytime. And if you're going to sail in February, a suit like this is essential. Poor old Alistair. So, how's Kevin getting along? Archbishop Simmons is known internationally. A cardinal. Well, practice sometimes makes perfect. And next we come to the, oh God, I wish I hadn't said that section. You know the type of thing when you could bite your tongue out for what you've just said or asked. First, the lady interviewee. It's nearly worse than drink. It's very hard to get it out of your system. So I just enjoy it. And we have so much water around Carrick. 
you know, it's a great way to relax and to have pleasure in a boat. <laughs> See what I mean? Uh, Uno Hagen knew what she meant to say, but that isn't quite the way it came out. Sid, can you tell me about your operation in America? I need a more specific question. <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> Yes, well, I knew what she meant. Uh, next to put his head on the block was uh, political correspondent Sean Dygan, who was interviewing the Taoiseach, Dr. Fitzgerald. Uh, it wasn't a great day for Sean. First of all, noisy workmen interrupted the interview, then the microphone fell off, and finally, he put these immortal questions. Is there any possibility, Taoiseach, that the government will be defeated in uh, the forthcoming confidence vote in the board? I don't believe so. Why not? Because I think we will win the confidence vote. In what way? Will you not have a majority of votes? Yeah. Right, I'll leave it at that, please, sir. Thank you very, very much. <laughs> then there was the uh, student occupation of offices in Dublin. Unfortunately, the students selected the wrong office, and they went instead to the offices of the revenue commissioners. When Connor Fennell and a camera crew turned up to film the occupation, they were shown the door in this manner. Okay. I'll, ask you to leave. I'll ask you to leave now. Okay. You're trespassing. Thank you. And you stick your camera up your ass. Now out. Come on. I'm not going to leave them there. I'll tell you nothing. You will leave the premises now. Thank you. This is a public This is a this is, a, this is a, the taxpayer's money's paper. And you have to do it all, all together around. Oh well, thank you very don't, much. Don't put your hand on me. I'm sorry, I'm just closing these doors if you don't mind. Thank you. Well, there's, there's no answer to that, is there? And what about the question of uh, reporters hanging around for interviewees to show up? How do they spend their time? Well, some play football in the street. Tommy Gorman did. And he shouldn't have. Magat, Platini oh, and right. Gorman. Ah, yes, the famous names. Just look at those right. skills picked up through years of painful observation at Sligo showgrounds. This, unfortunately, is where the ball ended up, I'm afraid, and that shot I hadn't allowed for the thin air of Remelton. I suppose the World Cup of 1986 has proved one thing for me. I'm not a striker, maybe a sweeper. See what I mean? When Newstime covered the motor show, we had to move pretty promptly to have the material ready for transmission that same evening. Alistair Jackson's job was to witness the unveiling of a brand new motor car. Curtains were to be pulled back, revealing the new product. Unfortunately, there was a, a bit of a breakdown in communication between Alistair and the young ladies who were to pull the curtains back. Uh, girls, 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 hold, hold it. Oh, God. Behind these curtains is the latest and biggest fate. It's being shown in Ireland for the first time outside Italy. Oh, It's gone, lads. I'm sorry. It's all and in case Peter McNiff thinks he's got off the hook, have a look at this. In the Westland Row, row, oh, sh after being waiting all that time. <laughs> and me? Oh, some people have a unique way of expressing their opinion of me. Take a look at this and keep your eye on the little baby in the woman's arms. All the neighbours. Mm -hmm. A few of us have been around. <coughs> That's great. Hmm, obviously didn't impress her. But to finish, let's go back to Kevin O'Kelly. Go for it, Kevin. This is the one, I'm telling you, this is the one. The one where I clap my hands like that. Cardinal Simmons, for his part, is of course known internationally for his efforts to promote Christian unity. I asked him, therefore, if he would agree with Archbishop Caird, who remarked in Dublin yesterday that he thought that there was now a lull in ecumenical activity.